Thank you guys so much. Um, it's amazing to be here and hear your stories. I'm a little bit in tears hearing this because um, I was diagnosed almost two years now um, and I would never ever heard of this condition until um, going in to just be tested for my hearing. Um, I had been suffering from postal tinnitus, which I also had no idea about. I wasn't really sure what was going on with my hearing. Um, I had thought it was related to possible um, blood pressure issues, which run in my family. Um, so I went in, I had my hearing tested um, and I unfortunately have uh, luck with not so great doctors. Um, and the doctor that I had seen and I explained that I had this whooshing in my ears and her first response was, this sounds like a brain aneurysm. And here, right, hearing that I was so taken aback that I couldn't think of anything else except the fact that I might have a brain aneurysm and had to wait two weeks for an MRI. Um, once I received the MRI, uh, I was matched with the neurologist who then told me about IIH and her first reply to me was, this is happening because you're overweight. You're overweight and you need to lose weight and all of this will go away. And I've been overweight majority of my life. So hearing this was a complete shock to me and I was upset. I was in tears and upset and I, I didn't really know what to do from there except for, you know, attempt to lose weight. And then to hear that this is a kind of exercise resistant condition was also very frustrating because I, I work with an amazing um, life coach and personal trainer and coach B who thankfully before being diagnosed, I was, I was on a great exercise regimen and I was having, you know, my vision was going, I was having the pulsable tinnitus and he was able to kind of work me down from that and, you know, notice that something was going on. And this was also kind of part of, I just couldn't put all of the things together to think that something was, that all of these things together meant something was wrong. Um, this was also kind of after COVID, she would not bring me in for physical appointments. She felt that virtual appointments were enough. I was put on Diamox which I did not handle well. Um, her response was to continue to up the Diamox and continue to lose weight. Those things were not helping me. Uh, I saw an ophthalmologist who gave me a visual exam, uh, didn't mention anything about eye swelling. He said, yeah, your eyes look a little bit swollen, didn't mention papal edema, didn't mention anything else. Uh, my neurologist kept doing virtual visits and said, okay, keep losing weight. We'll keep upping the medication and we'll go from there. I had an issue where I was getting, I don't know if anyone had this with Diamox. It causes a lot of tingling, hands, face, and feet. Um, it happened one day on only one side of my face, which was terrifying. My neurologist said I needed to go to the ER immediately. Um, they told me, well, I don't really know what to do gave me a lumbar puncture, sent me on my way. She switched me then to Topamax. Did not, in, did not let me know any of the side effects or anything as, um, as I believe it was Sue was saying, I had severe cognitive decline, um, which was incredibly scary. They told me, no, it's not the IIH. That's, that's not gonna do that to you. Um, my neurologist then had family issues. She went on, on a leave. Um, I lost my job due to my cognitive decline and everything going on with my health and then lost my insurance. During all of this, I lost peripheral vision, which I didn't know until later. I lost peripheral vision in my left eye. Um, I then, once I got insurance back, I found this amazing, amazing Dr. Buffard. Once he realized my condition, um, and he saw that I was seeing him, he cleared his schedule and took three hours of his, of his time to thoroughly examine me, make sure he knew what was going on. He sees me regularly monthly to make sure that my vision does not decline any further. Um, I have since lost over 40 pounds since being diagnosed. So as we were saying, we know that this isn't just just your weight and just losing weight. Um, I also have, 
you know, what Sue was saying, as I've lost weight, I also noticed that my symptoms do increase. Um, I still have constant pulse and tinnitus daily. Um, I still have cognitive issues. I suffer from fatigue and continence. Um, I actually just this morning had a CT to see if there are possible venous uh, sinus stenosis issues. There's still a lot that I don't know about this condition. I'm still learning. Um, I'm so grateful that you guys found me and I'm able to learn more from all of you. Um, it's very scary. I'm also, my life has also completely changed. Um, I'm also no longer working. There's a lot of things that I'm unable to do with my life now. And I'm learning to adjust to that. I'm in, so incredibly grateful to my new care team that takes the time to listen to me and help guide me through what's going on with me because I was so confused and I had no idea what was going on. And everyone tells me, oh, you look great. You, you look amazing. And I do, I look great on the outside. I look wonderful. This is the, the smallest I've been in years. Um, I feel off most days. And all I can tell people is that to advocate for yourselves, advocate. Don't let your doctors tell you, you know, oh yeah, just keep, keep up, you know, we'll check in with you, we'll check in with you. If something doesn't feel right, keep pushing. Tell them that something is wrong. Tell them that this is not right. They don't know everything. I went to the ER one night because my headache was so severe. And, and it just wouldn't stop. And I told them about my condition and it was almost very too clear to me. That the doctor went in back, Googled what my condition was because he came back out and said, you know that for this condition, it's medication and weight loss, right? And I was like, I do know that, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> I do know that I'm very well aware. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't desire lumbar punctures. My opening pressure when being diagnosed was 49. Um, it's, it's terrifying. The, I, I never know how I'm going to feel on a daily basis. And the only thing I can do is continue to advocate for myself. I keep up with my appointments monthly. I, I see my doctor, he, he tells me, go to the front desk. And if they tell you that there's no appointment, you tell them to book me, to book you on my lunch. <laughs> and I, you make sure you come in. Um, and I just have to keep going. I am on, I'm on, um, a high dosage right now. I have severe, I'm suffering from severe papilledema at the moment. Um, the goal is to make sure that I do not lose any more of my vision. Um, thankfully I'm at a point because I am still losing weight and things aren't getting worse, but they're not getting better that I don't need a shunt yet. Don't need a shunt yet, but um, I do still have quite severe papilledema. I cannot see here, the side. Um, but I've changed my diet, which has seemed to have helped in in some aspects. I unfortunately cut out caffeine. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that I've noticed, you know, that that do aid me, but at the same time. The symptoms are there daily and it's it's I can only speak for myself as Ashley was saying it's very different for everyone it's very very different for everyone it I know some people I I do get the headaches I don't get them as severely as I used to it for me it I noticed something that I, I didn't realize what was going on with me is that I had severe eye pain almost every morning and nausea and I had no idea what was wrong with me. I'm like, I must have allergies or something must be bothering me. And this is what it was.